What we do in psychodrama is offer someone the clinical stage on which they can place their own reality. We don't tell them what their reality is. We offer them a situation so that they can produce it and work on it. It gave me an opportunity to say to myself the things I needed to hear and didn't. So in psychodrama, when we're playing out in concrete form, scenes that have been uh, lost in the psyche, uh, nebulous, unable to grasp, suddenly you put them in concrete form and there you are. Put it on stage and reflect through action. And then once you see the action, to look back and witness yourself. This psychodrama allows the feelings behind the words so the words may trigger the feeling, and then you can go, you can follow the feelings, the feelings can really flow, and because you're not in your head anymore, you're, you're in your heart, which is, which is where it's, it's happened, where it's been broken. Trauma's lodged in the body. We can't just ignore the body piece of trauma. And that's where psychodrama has found a new role and a new birth because it gives the body a way to engage in the therapy which accesses the memory and gives it a way to be worked with adding the cognitive piece. Because what happens in trauma is memory gets stored bypassing cognitive functioning. So it doesn't get stored in the brain, which is a good computer, in the categories and with the context. It gets stored anywhere it gets stored, depending on how the brain is taking in information at that point. In a buffer storage, it gets repressed, it might get dissociated from, it might find its lodging in the body. So trauma is a body as well as a mind experience, and psychodrama is a body as well as a mind therapy to address those issues. Trauma decontextualizes. Things feel unreal when they're when they're traumatic. We feel like we're watching a movie. The anger is um, about um, I mean the reenactment. We shut down and freeze and feel like we're seeing ourselves in motion, but we're not really there. There's that hole inside that I just. Now I don't, now, today, I don't know how to fill it up. And um, so there's anger because I keep reenacting a situation over and over again. Psychodrama is a method of role play developed by J. L. Moreno. It allows the body as well as the mind to tell its story through talking and interaction. Psychodrama mimics life. It uses the group as a representation of society in miniature offering a safe space where both internal and interpersonal issues can emerge into the therapeutic moment so that they can be experienced and worked through in a concrete form. The therapist and all involved can observe what the body as well as the mind is saying. Show us, don't tell us, is psychodrama's dictum. This makes psychodrama an ideal mind-body form of therapy in which all parts of the self can be naturally expressed and explored. The psychodramas you are about to view are spontaneous, unscripted, and unrehearsed. As a director, I will assist the protagonist as they revisit meaningful scenes or psychological reconstructions from their lives that they wish to explore. The anger is um, about, um, I mean, the reenactment. So what's the seed of the reenactment?
equal loss. Um, um, my mother selling out for um, for uh, security. In the warm-up phase of psychodrama, we get in touch with our own internal stories so that the movement toward action feels natural. Suddenly, we're warmed up to a story where we want to say the words. We want to move it into action. I was the youngest, and my brother Mike's two years older, but she allowed all the others to get kicked out of the house for security, and um, she opted for the security. My stepfather didn't want them there. He was an alcoholic. I got in touch with some issues about uh, my granddaughter that I'm beginning to sort of, um, I use the word terrorized the way I was terrorized as a kid, but if my granddaughter says, I don't like you, I come back like a four-year-old and I say, I don't like you either, you know, and I just feel like I'm becoming my stepfather and I'm setting up situations that are similar to, to, what, to what he did to me. Well, I want to hear my mother say to me, that if I swallowed crushed glass, or if I'd walk over hot coals, and I would give up John Sacker for you, that's my stepfather, that I would, I would, I would protect you, I would save you, I would love you, I would care for you, you know. And this is, and this is what, this is what I'm doing with my wife. I'm, 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 I'm testing. I'm, I'm, I'm making demands. I'm, even though I'm working till 10 o'clock at night. Um, I say I'm resentful that she's going out with her friends to go out to dinner. Why don't you just stay home and wait for me? And I know, up here again, that that's illogical, but... Let's find Mom. Yeah. In the action phase, we actually set up the scene, we feel the feelings, we start to make connections and label the emotion so that we can introduce emotional literacy. We resolve the distorted meaning that a situation may have had for us. We start to see the, the picture. All my life I can remember saying, or I remember you saying, of course I love you, you're my son. Of course I love you. It gets to be like, of course I love you, you're my son, you idiot. I don't remember asking the question, but I must have asked the question repeatedly. And you always said, of course I love you, you're my son. But you never said it in a way that I really felt that you loved me, that you really, you were so happy to have me as a son. I never, I always felt like, an, like a, go over there, get out, just, just get out, you know? Left-handed compliments. I went back to school and, 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 and um, as an adult, and you said to me, I said, Mom, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to college. It's been years. I'm going back to college. And you said, Bobby, you always do things backwards. So what does Bobby want to say to Mom from way down inside? And I'm pissed at you, and it's like it screws up my relationships, and I'm, I'm looking around to get stuff from my wife that only you were able to give me, and only you could have given me. And damn it, you never did. It was always like, I love you. Of course I love you. Don't be stupid. You know? Stop crying. We have a picture, a beautiful picture. A beautiful, beautiful picture of me. I don't know how old I could have been. You were holding me. And you were with your friend. And the two of you were standing so proud and you were holding me. And somehow I remember having blonde hair, but I don't think I had blonde hair, but it looked like I had blonde hair, and I looked so precious and adorable and cute. Yeah. And you were holding me. Yeah. yeah, you were holding me. You can see Diane absorbing the role of mother, letting it sink in, figuring out how she can play it so that she it will play like the it. role as it happened in Bob's life. Talk to the little boy in her arms. It feels like you love me. It feels like you really love me. It feels like you really care for me. I just feel so nice up, up against your chest. It just feels so good. You know? And you look like you're proud of me. So what happened? <laughs> what happened? You loved me then. It looks like you loved me in that picture. 
Bob has asked a direct question, what happened? He will need to reverse roles in order to answer it. So what happened? You now he dead. takes on the role of his picture. mother, playing her as he saw her as a child, along with the sense he's made out of it over the years. Needy. You're just too needy. I don't understand that. I can't understand the emotions. Leave me alone. I don't know where to go with it. I don't know what to do with it. I love you. I love you, okay? I I'll say it. I believe that you love me. I love you. I don't know You're what really to do. You're really angry when you say I'm needy. Oh, not you too, Bobby. Come on. You mean Your brothers me and sisters are always saying the same thing. What's wrong with having needs? I'm a little kid. Little I don't know what to needs. do with them, so I don't want to deal with them. Just leave me alone. I've what got too I much stuff to, to worry about. Your father died. I'm, a kid. I'm married again. I have too much stuff. But who's going to take care of me? What about me? I'll take what care of me? you. You don't like me. You have too many need. needs. A boy's not supposed to have all those needs. Again. A boy's not supposed to have all those needs, damn it. But I do. No. Only I girls. Do. I do. Only I do. girls. I do. I do. I do. No, no, no. Yes. yes. No. Yes. Yes. Boys don't have those needs. You're a freak. Where did you get all those feelings, you freak? I don't have them. I feel like punching you. Standing in the shoes of another person can help us to understand what went wrong. You're mean to me. I love you. You're my son, of course I love you. Bullshit. Watch your language. No, I won't. It's a stupid question. It's not stupid. You're always saying I'm stupid. You're always insulting me, giving me backhanded compliments. Mom. Now I start to interview Bob in order to deepen his experience in the role of mother. We never, you know, we never talked about feelings. Back home it was very hard. We worked, we went to school. What was back home? Back home in Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay. My parents came from Europe and, and we just worked hard. My father worked in the mines, my mother worked the farm. I really, really liked men. But he was Jewish, and we couldn't... You're not supposed to marry somebody Jewish. So, so you miss the man you loved, and then you had to... Yeah, yeah, my mother said, don't do it, don't do it. Marry John, marry John. He's one of us, you know, or close to one of us, you know. He's Ukrainian, marry him, you know. And it just felt like the right thing to do, but I think I loved Ben. I think I really wanted Ben. Can you tell your son that? Ben liked you very much. He did. Yeah. He would have been a good father for you, Ben. He would have understood you being yeah, a boy with feelings. Yeah. Small memories that carry tremendous meaning surface during the course of a psychodrama. Well, I, I thought of the two of them together <laughs> and how Ben liked to take them <laughs> to the pickle factory. <laughs> He used to take him to the pickle factory. How <laughs> stupid that I couldn't be with him because he's Jewish, you know? Well, so what a waste, what a shame. <sighs> he would have been a good father for you, I know, not John Sacker. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry about John Stacker. What happens when we have had a painful memory that we say repressed, when it starts to be felt and come to the surface, as we're feeling it, we're thinking about it. We're seeing it now, not only as it happened, when it happened, but through the eyes of an adult. So we see it differently. And as we do that, we start to reframe things. Perhaps we were a child who was powerless, who thought, I must be bad or my parent wouldn't yell at me like this. As the adult within us witnesses it, we realize I, I wasn't so bad. I was a child in a situation that 
was unmanageable for me. My parent yelled at me not because I was bad, but perhaps because they were drunk or they were very stressed out from living with addiction. And so we alter that meaning that we made out of that traumatic circumstance that we now live by unconsciously. We make the memory conscious where we can see it differently, create new meaning, create a sort of new narrative, understand it differently, and replace it within the context of our lives. I remember when we were kids, and my stepfather and I, for some reason, were in the city. He bought me ice skates, but they got two left feet, two left shoes, ice skates. And um, we were at Rockefeller um, Ice Rink, and we were going home on the subway back to Queens, and we ran into a neighbor, a man, and his son. And they were telling us what they had done in the city. I don't remember what it was so many years ago, but I do recall that my stepfather said, how stupid, how, what do they go there for? What do they do that for? You know, it's like, you know, it was so negative. It was just so disgusting. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I, I think of that a lot when I do that to China. Let's see if we can find John Sacker in the room. Uh, either my walls are coming up, but there's nobody that I'm attaching to. There's nobody that I like, you know. Keep looking at Travis. Reverse rolls and show us John Sacker. Just two seconds of showing us. Body position. He was always about to tell a dirty joke. He was always about to say something derogatory. He was always like genital oriented. He was always like, you know, um, he just, I don't know. He just, ugh, you know, he just he was not very, he wasn't in his body. Got that? Just reverse yeah, rolls. It's just okay. Say what you need to say to John. What did you call him? John. Okay. I try to call you Dad, and you cut me down so quick. And you said, "Don't you ever, ever call me Dad." Don't ever, ever call me dad. Don't you ever, ever call me dad. Yeah. Get over that. Yeah. Believe me, I'm over it today. I'm over it today. You know? You're such an ugly human being. So if we're spiraling back, if we started in the present with Susan and China and we're spiraling back to those early scenes, what is little Bobby? need to say to this man. Why my mother ever married you is just beyond my understanding. Throw another knife and I'll kick you in the balls. That's what I'll do. Don't you threaten. And then when we get you down, when we get him down on the floor, okay, and then you say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You say, let him go. Let's call the police. When the police come over, they go over to him. The police go over to him and say, oh, okay, sober up, buddy, sober up while we're cowering in the corner. We're talking about family violence here. The protagonist needs to experience the role as they experienced it at the time of the trauma. Your father was a real man. You're, you're afraid to say to me what you need to you're say. You're a man? I'm a man. You're a sick excuse for a man. That's what you are. You're a sick excuse for a man. Huh? <laughs> Making all the dirty jokes, huh? Going around beating up people. That's a man. That's, That's a, real a real man. man. That's a real That's man. A man does. Yeah. And what about your daughter, right? Your daughter's totally out of your life. Stay in. What does little Bobby need to say to this man? Stop beating up on us. Stop beating up on us. Stop beating up on my mother. Leave my mother alone. What are you going to do? Stop beating up on my mother. What are you going to do? Well, if I can't do it, we'll gang up on you. We'll gang up on It'll take that's more what than we one did. of you. Yeah. Well, you well that. that's what it takes, and we'll take it. it. Took three of us to get you down. It took three of us to get you, and we got you down. And the question that started the scene I don't know was how much anger? How much anger are you feeling? And you were feeling plenty of it. I get to be you. I mean, I, I, become, I become you. You and that's sick. That years. is sick. That is sick, that part of me that becomes you. That's very sick. 
I just want to exercise, take that part of me and just take it out, huh? You dream of Let's choose as someone as to play the part of the part of you that becomes him. Let's choose that. Find the part of you that becomes him. Which Al, yeah, would you do it? Sure. <laughs> the part of me that becomes him. Yeah, the part of you that you want to get rid of. What do you want to where is it standing? The part of me that becomes him. Yeah. Same. I just somehow want to. Whatever's there. You don't have to. Do whatever you want. We to don't do. have to. You don't have to. Mimic this guy. We, we. You don't have to mimic him. Reverse role. You don't have to mimic this guy. We don't have yeah, to. Yeah, but mimic. I don't have another image. I don't have another. You know, when the shit hits the fan, I go right there. When the shit hits the fan, that's where I go. I don't know what to do. We're scared. Yeah. When China warms me up to those needs and everything, oh, yeah. I go right there. The double gives voice to the inner world of the protagonist. The double's job is to articulate emotions that may be unavailable to the protagonist, to help to bring them to a conscious level. I become him. I want to. I want to terrorize. Oh, I don't even terror. I mean, I just sort of hint, you know, like like the other day. I sort of said, "We're driving on this road," and she said, "Where are we?" And I said, "We're going home," you know. We're, t we're taking another road, and it, w and it was a lot. It was a, it was a country road, and I said, to her, "Do you want to stop off and see the witch?" And I mean, I bit my tongue. I wanted to crash the car into a tree. Why did I say that? Yeah, that's what he would say. That's what he would do. You know, take me to Rockefeller Center, put on the two left ice skates, twirl me around, you know, beat us up, terrorize us. This part of me is there. It's dormant all the time. It sits inside of me. Just add water and I am... And I grow. I sprout. I grow. I, just I, do sprout. It. I grow. Yeah. It's a roll waiting to be triggered. How do I, how do I not do that? Reverse rolls. <laughs> therapist said to me, you're not going to do with the feelings anymore. With this situation, you got to like, you're going to have to think about it. Because when you get to anger, you get over here, you're lost. Is there one other thing we can do here? That you I can have somehow... a lot of anger towards him, but I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I do have a lot. So what ha when that gets triggered, thinking doesn't help you much, right? No, no, no. Thinking it's going to need help. to help you. But let's see but if right we can now, the, yeah, let's see yeah. if we can attach some words to those feelings so that when you start to think, you're thinking the right in the right language. You're pathetic. Yeah. And I, I want to say one thing. I want to say one thing here. Yeah. Okay. Now make sure you get it straight. Okay. Listen to me. Listen to me. Get it listen straight. to me. When my sister, not my half sister as you would like to say, she's my sister, your daughter, my sister, my mother's daughter, okay, looks like me. The spitting image of me, huh? Not like you. And I'll say it again, she's she your half sister. My sister. You ask she's her, she is sister. my sister, you, you pathetic Little man, punk. okay? She's my sister, and she looks just like me, just just like me. Like a little girl. I, yeah, 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 like a little yeah, girl. Not a man. No, no, not a, not a man, no, no. She looks like a little, I look like a man. You're confused. I look like a man. She looks like a girl. Say it but again. But we look, I, I am a man. I don't look, I am a man. You're confused. I'm a man, she's a girl. Again. I'm a man, she's a girl. And we look like each other. We have the same lips, the same nose. We look like each other. High cheekbones, okay? We look like each other. Half and you're shut up already. It's your shut head. Shut up. Yeah? Shut up. Stop me. 
Just stop me. You're so bad. Can't do it, can you? You can't do it. You never had the guts. You never will. Here, let me help you hold it. You think let you're so go. tough? It's okay. Let okay. Let that go. Yeah. Let that uh -huh. go. I don't need you anymore. I don't need you anymore. Okay? We don't need you anymore. No, we don't. We, we don't, don't need you anymore. Uh-huh. You pathetic piece of shit. You pathetic piece of shit. You pathetic human. You beat me when I was defenseless. You bullshit excuse for a human being. Excuse for a human being. Who goes around and beats up women and kids? You, you stupid asshole. You stupid asshole. You stupid asshole. Who does that? Then you go to your family and say, oh, those kids, man, all oh, those kids. What those kids? That's what we are, kids. You fucker, you fucker, you killed my sister, you motherfucker. They committed suicide because of you. I don't want you in my body anymore. I don't want you anywhere in here. Too late. It was too late. Too late years later when you said, no, you never said I'm sorry. No, you never said I'm sorry. You know, am I doing the right thing? That's what you said. No, you could never do the right thing. You screwed that up years ago. You know, the, the really weird thing was I was, I was on the road. I was down south somewhere doing a show and I got word that you died and I cried. Why did I cry? Why did I cry? Did I like you? Despite all of this crazy stuff, did I like you? Somewhere inside of me, I was attached to you. And it confuses me. Yeah, you were never nice to me. You were never really nice. Never, 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 never nice to me. And somehow I attached to you. I guess I couldn't believe it. I still wanted a father. I still want, I, I would accept, I would take you to be my father. That's how desperately I wanted a father. But you shit over everything. And you wanted everybody out of the house. I was too young. Mikey was too young. Shirley committed suicide. Dorothy committed suicide. Those were my sisters. They were my sisters, yeah. And I missed them. And Johnny. And Johnny died. Johnny was my brother, but Johnny was my father. He was the real surrogate father. And you kicked him out, you kicked Dorothy out, you kicked Shirley out. Mikey was next. It's sad. You're sad. Again. You're sad. Your daughter left. Not my sister. You're my step sister. You know? My step sister. 
who never had wanted to have anything to do with us, or anything to do with you. She just left, got as far away as she could. Nobody wanted you. I bet you used to go bawl your eyes out to your sisters and your brother. Your brother was a mean man, too. Your brother beat his son with a bat over the head. God. That's what you guys knew what to do. You just hit. You hit. You guys came from a bad place. You came from a real bad place. You came from a real bad place. And you brought that place with you into our yeah. home. My home. You gave me your stuff. You gave us your poison. And if I'm a sissy because I cry, so I'm a sissy. Okay? I don't really believe that. Men cry. Again. Men have feelings. Again. Men cry. Mom, men cry, Mom. Again. Men have feelings, Mom. Okay? No, there's something special about Bobby. There's something, so you don't know how to handle it. You told me that, John. He said, there's something special about Bobby. And he was proud of me. He was very proud of me. He was proud of me. Yeah. And my heart ripped out of my chest when he died. He was very, very proud of me. He was proud of me. Yeah. He said, there's something special about Bobby. Yeah. I hope you heard that. Reverse rolls. He said, Mom, I love you, and I'm very, very sorry for the hurt that I've caused of anything that I've done. I'm really very, very sorry for it. And I said, Bobby, I love you too. I love you. I, I said that. I didn't say, of course I love you, you're my son. I said, I love you. And I said, I'm sorry too. And I'm really sorry for the abuse. I'm sorry for marrying John Sacker. If I'd known that that's the way it was going to be, I, I wouldn't have done it. And I do love you. Would you be willing to put the ugly picture behind and hold in your heart the picture of me. Two pictures, two pictures. One of me holding you and the other one of the love that we had together when I was dying. Because that I really did love you and I was saying goodbye. Did you do that? Hold the two pictures. Reverse rolls? Yeah. Would you do something for me? Would you be willing to hold the two pictures? The one of me holding you when you were a baby in my arms, remember that? And the other one of you holding me when I was dying, because I love you. I really, I really love you. Say it again. I really love you. I really love you. I love you. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> I love you. You. Would you walk over hot coals for me? I'd walk over hot coals for you. I'd eat jagged glass for you. I'd give up John for you. That's how much I love you. That's how much. Yeah. With feeling. Yeah. So 
hard for me to understand that. You know, I, I'm not as educated, as sophisticated as you, you know. But I know you had feelings, but every time you had a feeling, you know, like the time I asked you if you really loved Dad, and I remember you were grating potatoes. I'll never forget. Yeah, was you were grating potatoes, potatoes and I said, tell me, did you really love Dad? And you went into a trance, yeah. and you were telling me about it, and the potato was grated, and you started to grate your knuckles. I remember that. It was like a little blood. And that's the first time, the only time that you really expressed feelings. And before that, you always clenched it and swallowed it. And I couldn't swallow mine. I couldn't swallow mine. It had to come out. Scary for me. Yeah. Feelings were scary. And the same with Mom anywhere you want to for now. It feels good. We spiraled back from the present, from Susan and China, into the origin. Can we just find China now? You look so scared. Sometimes I don't know what to expect from you. Yeah, I know. I'm very sorry. I've told you so many times I'm sorry. Yeah. And I made a promise that, that I'm not going to tease you in the wicked ways that I tease you. Yeah. And I've kept my promise. I mean, I, I, I haven't done it. <sighs> I'm so afraid that I scare you, China. I don't want you to be yeah. scared the way I was scared. Sometimes I feel like I terrorize you. I feel like, like you're going through the same feelings that I went through when I was a kid, and I don't want to do that to you. I don't want to do that to you. Okay. I, I want you to feel safe in the house. And China's not you. China's China. China's China. China's not you. She's not me. No, she could never be. She didn't have a stepfather. She didn't have any of the stuff you had. China's mm -hmm. China. You are my grandfather. I love you. I need you. Yeah. I need your love. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of love to give you. I have a lot of love. I know yeah. you can be good with me. Uh-huh. I'm yeah. a child. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you sing all day and that you walk around dress up. You're going to be an actress, I say that. You know, walk around dress up and... And I do love you. I love you too, Mother. You say that I scare you and you scare me. But... Why do I scare you? Something gets triggered in me. Yeah. That place in me, the how old are you, China? You're four. You're four. Well, when I was four, I was going through a lot. And your four-year-old triggers my four-year-old, and then my four-year-old doesn't know what to do. Is that And then I get into a sort of tug of war with you, and you say, I don't like you, and I say, I don't like you either. We're both four. We're both four. And then Nana says, Pop up, you're the adult. <laughs> and I say, I don't like you either. <laughs> Is there are other things that get triggered? What needs to happen so that your four-year-old doesn't... When you first said that, I, my first thought was somehow she's not the enemy. You're not the enemy. No. And my fear is that, is that you're taking away something from me, the love or from Nana, from, that I want from Nana. But you're not, because no. Nana has plenty to give. You're adding to my social yeah. Adam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're giving me a lot. Yeah, you're adding to my life. 
can give yeah. me that also. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we have fun times together. We have fun times. So I want to realize for myself that you're not the enemy and that you're not there to take anything away from me. And Nana has a lot of love. I have a lot of love. I can give you love, Kaya love, Nana love. And Nana's not my mother. Hmm. Nana's my wife. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody Nana, else is her husband, just me. Just me. I don't share that role. Yeah. She wants me there. Yeah, Nana's my wife. I'm her husband. She's not my mother. She's not my mother. She's not my mother. My mother died. My mother died. Yeah. My mother's name is Susan. Nana's name is Susan. But they're separate people. Yeah. Two Susans. Two Susans. So end the scene with China any way you wish to for now. Hmm. Today is Friday, so I can't take you to Burger King because I'm here. <laughs> but next week, I promise to take you to Burger King. And I promise that we'll sit in the seat that has the 1950s car, all right? And I'll wear the silly crown. I won't make any... I won't I won't, I won't complain about it. <laughs> I like when you do that. <laughs> Psychodrama is like a smorgasbord. And you could put it out there and say, okay, let's look at this piece. Okay, well, that doesn't fit or that doesn't work, so let's look over here. So we can look at the issues and see, you know, what gets triggered. Mm -hmm. What's going on? <clears throat> what's, the, what's the pressure that's doing it? Mm -hmm. And psychodrama is a very safe way of looking at it and doing it. Sometimes sharing is called a love back, and I want to give love back to the protagonists uh, for going where they did today, and including me. It's a tremendous risk to let this kind of material come to the surface. Everyone who's played a part in the drama, the protagonist, or the people who have witnessed the drama, need an ample sharing period to release these feelings that come up. It can be re-traumatizing to witness or watch a drama. That's why the sharing phase is so important. I wanted to jump up and be the stone. I want to throw that little guy out of there and get in there with some real rage. Because that's what I carried around for a long time and which so disturbed Lisa for a long time, I think. You wonder if anyone, you know, knows what you're going through. It's like, uh, here's the group and here you are. It's like, it takes a long time then to process all these, these emotions, you know, it's like, you run away from home and then here you are and they take you back home. <laughs> I, I shared in here that I tried to piece together my history, why I'm so traumatized. My mother was, my grandfather I never knew, but he was an alcoholic. I, piece that together, and he beat the crap out of my grandmother, and probably my mother. And, and I was thinking, you know, you were kind of, maybe that's like my grandfather, you know? Seeing, so the whole thing is, thank you. <laughs> so do you want to de-roll Travis from the grandfather transference? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> when I looked around the room, um, <clears throat> I picked you as my mom, but I actually picked you because you look like my stepdad, uh, who I call my stepdad, my sister's father. And, uh, and then when you did your drama, I was like, oh my God, this is why. I mean, so like there. Um, like he, he told me when I was eight, he goes, He's, he's, he's Irish, um, Polish, and he, he's an alcoholic. And he said, you got two strikes going against you. One, you're black, and two, you're a woman. He used to talk like that. So when you did your step file, I was like, oh my God, this is, it's, it was so there. Um, and you're wanting something from your, for your, from your mom that 
she couldn't give, but like you're realizing at a certain point that she gave you what she could, and there was sometimes ways out. At least that's what I got um, from the drama. So there aren't any accidents. And I, when I looked at you, I knew I, I was picking you because you looked like my stepfather. But I, there's something I want from both of them. And uh, and you know, as I talked in my drama, he was coming in it again. And then I see you do your thing, and I'm like, wow. You know, there are no coincidences and no accidents that you picked me because and the stepfather reference you made was all all there and when you at one point mentioned about your mother being 30 something and having five kids my mother was 20 something having five kids when my father died you know and I really connected on that but what happened while I was up there listening to you I started to see you as my sister my sister Shirley the pain, the whole need to talk to mom about whatever you needed, and my, my sister, my sister was so alienated and so pushed out there and then became a, a junkie, she became a street junkie, you know, and then eventually committed suicide, and uh, I just saw her there, so, you know, it just gave me an appreciation again for my sister, you know, and for my mother, and, and that, that, just that, if we could wish, if we could have a wish granted and that my mothers could come back and see us today, you know, I just had this beautiful image of my mother sitting down with all five children, you know, and just, just like having a real conversation, a real human conversation and, you know, talking back and forth and not, not shamed by what happened or what, what's going to happen or all those kinds of things, you know, like a pure, you know, Maybe like a family. You know, I have a uh, very similar issue with my father and with, with the absence of. And, I, and that was very powerful for me, that, that moment of being, of being lost, of saying, how do we do that? And P.S., and I don't want to become that. You know what I mean? I don't want to become. I, 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 in, my, in my entire fucking family, there's not one, there's not one decent role model for what I think about a parent should be. So I, you know, I thought, well, what do we do? We, you know, we, we find one, we create one. I don't know. I don't know. But I, that it's an empty, empty place for me. And um, we watched it, to, 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 it. It it helped me to know that I'm not alone. Uh, the whole process has helped me heal. Um, a lot of issues, a lot of issues from, from you know, family of origin, present day stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, because what we want to do, in a way, is to revisit the past mm -hmm. and kind of open up about it or look at those numb feelings or those frozen feelings and maybe um, say the things that we need to say, didn't have the opportunity to say as children or as adults. And I think that's so freeing. That's so freeing. Once you get it out there, once you put it out to the universe, once you put it out, out of your closed insides, mm -hmm. healing takes place. How that works, it's amazing. It's amazing. So How did they I love I love I love doing it, being a participant and I love working as a therapist using psychodrama. I love doing it in my men's group. I have a men's recovery group and mm -hmm. I I use psychodrama. Mm -hmm. And um, it blows them out of the water, but uh, the healing mm -hmm. is just so phenomenal, you know? Psychodrama allows us to re-inhabit the body we lived in at the time of the trauma to slow reality down through role play and role reversal to, to re replay a situation that traumatized us safely enough so that the thinking mind that shut down at the time of the trauma can come back on the board, back on board and make sense and meaning from the adult point of view. It allows us to live again and make new sense and meaning. Sorting things out here and realizing how powerful it was. And it kind of took me by surprise. I admired the courage, both of you and Sheila jumping right in there. And, and Bob, so much a man by being willing to put out so much not only deep feeling and a range of feeling, but also owning conflicting and kind of sh 
shameful feelings, you know. Because I remember once in a meeting just saying to some guy, you know, kind of responding to that kind of atmosphere of like, that tough shut up and get it together, you know. It's like I just had to say out loud, it's like, hey, you want to, you know, you want to square off? Let's deal with some real deep feelings, see how much of a man you are, you know. You want to do that, you know, Let's see how tough you are, man. <laughs> It's easy to shut down from him and stay away from him. Let's get into him and see how tough you are. <laughs> it's a funny kind of like calling someone out in the bar. It's a different version. Let's step outside and feel feelings, man. Bring your issue. Bring your issue.